I'm talking quietly because my wife is asleep. It's 6 a.m., it's seven degrees below freezing outside, and eight is the number of layers I have on. Let's go shoot some winter photos. Here's how, play tape. <laughs> There's a wonderful Norwegian saying, there is no bad weather, only bad clothes. Thankfully, pro-level cameras are built for harsh weather conditions. I've heard reports of photographers shooting in temperatures as low as minus 30. I've only managed minus 20, and even then, the camera still outlasted me. It's rare that I will head out into the field with my camera gear and know exactly what I'm going to photograph, or which lens I'll be using. Usually I have a rough idea of the location because I'll have made a mental note on previous walks or shoots. The photographer's eye is always on standby. Being prepared is key to taking good professional images, but saving a little room for improvisation and the unknown is what keeps you interested and coming back for more. Life and that box of chocolates. I've always been drawn to water in photography. I actively seek it out, whether it be rivers, rock pools, waterfalls, or the ocean. Here I'm using the towpath as my leading lines, the canal for some reflections, and playing a waiting game for sunrise and some passers-by. Setting the camera to shoot a 1.6 second exposure to smooth the water, I had some good fortune with a cyclist riding past. Morning team, oh, it's a brisk one this morning. There was a deep permafrost last night and it hit minus seven degrees. So I set the alarm for 6 a.m., packed the camera bag, hit the road in search of those winter wonderland shots and those crystallized tree images, but uh, wasn't to be unfortunately. So I'm gonna head home, see what I've got, load up the images on the computer and I'll come back tomorrow since there's gonna be another frost overnight and uh, take my chances. I'll see you then. A useful tip when shooting photography in extreme temperatures, when you arrive home, simply leave your camera in the bag to gradually reach room temperature. A couple of hours should do it. Opening the memory card slot, or worse still, taking the lens off the camera while it's still freezing cold inside a warm house, you're gonna create condensation inside the camera, and I'm told that's bad. Hmm. The following morning, it was warmer at minus two, but felt colder due to the wind chill factor. Still no winter wonderland frost, but a beautiful sunrise was beginning to form. It's a beautiful crisp morning again. Uh, I found this ruin over the back here and it's surrounded by all these blackbirds. So I'm gonna wait until they all take flight and use fast burst mode and catch them at 500th of a second, F5.6 and ISO 400. While I waited, I adjusted my settings a touch to accommodate the fast moving birds and get a little extra depth of field. I settled on 800th of a second, F7.1 and ISO 400. I'll be showing you my editing process later in the video.
As the sun rose further into the sky, some moodier clouds were beginning to form. It's always a challenge finding the best composition for a particular subject, especially when you're not allowed on private land. Exploring another vantage point and a completely different camera setup, I was able to achieve a totally different feel. So now I'm going for a 25 second exposure with a 10 stop ND filter, F18 and ISO 500. things out. <laughs> so I'm going to capture this with 15th of a second so I get a nice motion blur in that water. F4 and ISO 50 should get me those icicles really nice and clear. A decent pair of gloves with finger holes are essential for a happy winter photographer. With a full heart, full memory cards, an exhausted drone, and a hot breakfast waiting for me at home, it was time to head back for some post-production. Mmm, <laughs> good breakfast. Right, let's dive into one of those images from today. This is the image we're going to be working on, the ruin just after sunrise with the blackbirds. The raw image looks a little colourless and flat, so let's apply some basic adjustments starting with the colour profile, changing it to vivid, and I'll increase the exposure a touch. Highlights I'm going to take down to minus 30, and also shadows down a little. Now I'm a fan of taking out texture on landscapes, it adds a dreamlike quality to images like these but I'll keep the clarity up at plus 10. Dehaze I use sparingly because it can oversaturate and degrade the image somewhat. About plus 20 is good. Now onto the HSL sliders. And on the luminance tab, I'll reduce down the blues to minus 20. Increase the aquas. Saturation, I'll take the greens all the way down. And finally on the hue tab, move the yellows more towards the orange. The greens towards cyans, and the same with the blues. Colour grading wheels, I'm going to push the luminance on the highlights to plus 10. With sharpening, I never really go past 60. And because we shot the image on ISO 400, I'm just going to add a touch of noise reduction. Finally, I'll add a gradient and drag it from the top corner and follow the line of the ruin. Reduce the exposure by about a stop. Bring up the shadows as to not lose detail in those branches. And clarity, I'll bump to about plus 50. Now one more gradient filter just for the grass in the foreground. Increase the exposure by about a stop and lots of contrast. Shadows to negative 10 and plenty of whites to bring out the sunlight hitting the grass. So let's see a quick before and after. And let's open it in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a copy of the background layer. Then add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And on the blue channel, I'm going to desaturate and also darken those parts of the sky. Next up, I'll create a curves adjustment layer and reduce the midtones. Then invert the mask with Control or Command I. Then with a soft edge white brush because white reveals. Flow down to 10%. Just start painting in those darker mid-tones from beneath the mask. Now I'll create one more global curves adjustment layer and darken the image. But just bring back the foreground as we don't want the effect there. And also bring back some of the tree trunks and some of those branches. I'll create yet another curves adjustment layer and invert the mask and do some final burning on that ruin. Mm -hmm. 
Now for some color grading with a color balance adjustment layer. On the black channel, I'll introduce some magentas with plus one, and that's all it takes. The blues, I'll push the cyans up to about plus 13, and blues the same. On the green channel, I'll max out the cyans, and yellow reduce down to minus 12. So, so these are all very subtle changes, but all add to the end result. I felt the image was slightly unbalanced when it came to the blackbirds, so I decided to add one more from another image in the set. So I'm gonna select this one here with the object selection tool. Then I'll head into select and mask to see how Photoshop did. So that's a pretty good selection. So I'll okay that and press Control or Command C to copy, head back to the main image and then Control or Command V to paste it. Then simply resize it and place it where it looks good. So almost there. So I'm gonna stamp down all of the layers into one layer with Control, Alt, Shift and E and then convert it to a smart object. Then head up to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. Using the color mixer, I'll just do some final color grading with the oranges and yellows to make them even more orange. And a bump in the vibrance completes the edit. That's your lot, folks. Stay warm, stay happy, stay connected. Throw me some comments, let me know which images you preferred. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more photo and video content, and hit that like button, you gorgeous lot. McGee, out.